Hi, my name is Ali Shesova and in this video we're going to talk about how you select the capacitor on the input of the filter which we normally call the pie cap. Okay, uh, so so far from the previous videos we have calculated pretty much all of the components uh, with the exception of this capacitor here that I'm going to call C pi, as in the capacitor that makes it look like a pi filter. Uh, this is actually as for the differential mode currents, uh, doesn't have much impact on the common mode currents and you can see because it's sitting between the line and the neutral or line and the return and of course the chassis or the protective earth is here. We've already discussed how you design the, uh, uh, calculate the value of the differential mode components. Uh, this is uh, L1 and C1 and the reason why we have the damping uh, capacitor and the damping resistor. We have also discussed how we calculate and size of our common mode choke and then the common mode capacitances that goes to the chassis. The final thing we're going to talk about is this extra capacitor that we can add in order to get just some little bit more of attenuation. Now if you consider this um, the calculation of this actually is dependent on L source. So the source inductance makes a huge impact on what size this can be. However, because we are using a listen, depending on the type of the listen that you're using, we are using a CISPA 16. To the differential mode currents, this inductance of the listen looks like 100 microhenries. If you're using a different listen or you've got a different amount of source inductance, you use that to take into account. The derivation of these equations are actually quite uh, complex and we go through these uh, in our workshops, but for now, in order to size it appropriately so that it does not cause oscillations or, or, or does not behave badly, you need to follow three rules. First of all, C pi, the size of this, has to be smaller than one-fifth of C1. Okay, so if you do not make this much smaller than, and than that, then these two will interact and you do not get the cutoff frequency that you, you require. Uh, secondly, um, the resonant frequency uh, of um, the filter that is formed when you add C pi is dependent on the switching frequency. And you're trying to be away from the resonance of this circuit with regard to the switching frequency. And you can see this from rule two, whereby you take into account your switching frequency and you take into account the source inductance. In our case, for example, switching frequency FS is going to be 200 kilohertz. I am using a CISPA 16 uh, listen, and that is two times 50 microhenry. So L source is equal to 100 microhenries. I calculated L1 in one of the uh, previous uh, um, uh, 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 videos and therefore I can calculate what value of C pi I can have where it must be bigger than so that I don't cause a resonance at the switching frequency or how much it should be smaller than, what value should be smaller than so that again I do not cause uh, a resonance with the switching frequency. Finally, there is rule three. Again, I won't go through the derivations of this which says C pi has to be bigger than one over 10 pi Fs when Fs is the switching frequency. Armed with these three rules, we can very quickly narrow down what values of C pi we can have if we use the impedance paper that we have discussed before. So if I go down to my impedance paper, I have got the rules written down already. I know that my differential mode filter capacitor is 20 microfarads and its inductance is uh, 10 microhenries and I know that the switching frequency is uh, 200 kilohertz. So immediately from rule one, I know that C pi must be one fifth of this and therefore C pi must be the smaller than 4 microhenry. Okay? So, I take a, my ruler, I find 4 microhenries, that's 2, that's 3, that's 4 microhenries. Sorry, beg your pardon, uh, microfarads. Um, and I draw a line down here. And I know that this capacitor must be smaller than 4 microfarads. So it cannot be in any of this region. So I can immediately cross out 
all of this region here to show that my capacitor cannot be bigger than this value. Then rule two gives me how far away from the resonance I have to be dependent on L source, which I said was 100 microhenries. That was L source. Switching frequency in my case was 200 kilohertz and L1 is 10 microhenries. And these two equations give me the C pi that has to be either bigger than 280 nanofarads, bigger than 280 nanofarads, or smaller than 17 nanofarads. So again, I can go to uh, my uh, impedance paper and uh, I can take my line for bigger than 280 nanofarads, that's 200, that's 300, let's round it up to 300, so there we go, that's one line for 300 nanos. And 17 nano, so let's round that to 20. There we go, these are the two lines. So according to these two equations, anything between those two lines is going to cause an issue in terms of resonance. There we go. This is the region that I cannot select because I will have a resonance problem. And actually the noise, believe it or not, will get bigger as I add the capacitor. So now I've got two regions whereby I can have my pi capacitor either within this range or within that range. Finally we come to rule 3, C pi has to be bigger than 1 over 10 pi fs and that is turns out to be 160 nanofarads so let's find out 160 it is around here it has to be bigger than this so all of this region will also go out of the picture and it turns out that the size of my pi capacitor is actually very limited as you can see because all these areas have been crossed out and I can only have it from this point up to this point with and the center point is around 1 microfarad 100 from 300 nanofarads to about 4 microfarad and a value in the middle, like one microfarad, would determine the size of the pi capacitor. That will not resonate, but it will also give you very good filtering. Uh, the only final requirement is that it is not too big that causes an inrush problem and things like that, but you could easily also add those requirements to the impedance paper, cross the region out, and very quickly come to the final value of the C pi.